What's up YouTube? I've got quite the assortment of computer parts on my coffee table today that I'll be putting together into a complete build here soon. None of this stuff is too exciting. I think I have a grand total of $29 I've spent on everything that's going to be going into this build. Sands the case, which actually UPS is set to deliver here in just a little while, so I'm hoping for a knock at the door. But most of what's going to be going into this build is older, obsolete hardware, um, socket 775 board, and really just some stuff that was sitting in my junk room. But the goal of this build is to put together an extra computer to have around when I'm testing audio equipment to basically just play music, and also to test different distros of Linux on to see what I like. So. We'll go ahead and take a look at each of these parts individually and when the case shows up we'll go ahead and uh, put them all together and hopefully everything works. Here's the motherboard I'll be using for this build. It's the Asus P5KPL AMSE. It's a pretty basic board overall. Doesn't have any modern digital display connections on board or USB 3. It did come with this Pentium what is it? An E5300, I believe, and two mismatched RAM sticks. The board, the board, and all the hardware that came with it, including the little push pin cooler that was mounted on it before, was I think nine dollars, and the shipping was fifteen dollars. So um, didn't pay too much, but probably didn't get the deal of the century either. I did have in my junk box this dual core chip for the 775 socket it's a E8400 which I believe is one of the fastest uh, dual core chips that this board supports and I'm not willing to pay what eBay wants for some of the faster clocked core 2 quads that I could use on this board and I do have this Hyper 212 Black Edition left over from a previous build even though this board is older, it does have the full size PCI Express X16 slot and also an X1 slot that I'll be using to add USB 3 rear ports and also an internal USB 3 header so I can use the front panel header on the case. Also has the old school PCI slot, two SATA ports which isn't great but will be enough for this basic build. But I'm going to go ahead and get these chips swapped out and get the Hyper 212 heatsink mounted and then we'll take a look at the rest of what's going into this. Here's the memory I'll be using for this build. It's just two 2 gigabyte sticks of Samsung DDR2 800 megahertz. I already had one of the sticks. Most of the DDR2 memory I had was mismatched. The few pairs I did have were either slower or smaller capacity. And although I would have liked to have 8 gigabytes of memory total for this build, this should do fine. It mostly satisfies the OCD also because I have to have matching RAM sticks on my computer, although these are slightly different revisions. The PCBs are a little bit different color. But I did pick up the second stick for $4 with shipping on eBay. And it's the only thing other than this motherboard and the associated parts that came with it that I actually actively purchased for this build oh and of course the USB 3 card which was about five dollars so I'm keeping in my goal of not investing too much money in this build with this memory at least I have my choice of two optical drives for this build they're both just DVD burners HL brand from old Dell Optiplex computers I think I'm going to go with the all black one even though it's a little bit older. I don't even think it will really be used that much in this system if at all. But I am kind of old school and I do like to have an optical drive still. I collect my music on CDs. And for the boot and storage drive I just have this little HP 120 gigabyte SSD. Very lightweight. Weighs almost nothing. Really didn't cost very much either. I think it was like $18 when I purchased it and I got it from a big box retail chain store. For the audio visual side of things, here's the parts I've chosen, or rather the ones that were already sitting around in my piles of electronic stuff. I have this GeForce GTX 750 reference card. It's just one gigabyte of VRAM. Nothing too special, but it'll at least give me modern connections. This has HDMI, DisplayPort, and DVI. 
and for the audio I've chosen this external sound card the M Audio Fast Track Pro should be perfect for what I'm doing has balanced and unbalanced connections so it should be good for really any type of equipment I want to test and here's the power supply I'll be using it's this nice CX450 Corsair power supply it's very low hours this one just kind of gets kicked around from system to system oh someone's interested in the build aren't they <laughs> but this power supply just kind of goes from build to build and it's more geared towards that entry level system it only has four SATA power connectors but it is pretty heavy for the wattage rating and it's nice for this build because it will also match the case the case I'm going to be using is the Corsair 200R without having even built in this case yet it already has some stuff I kind of have mixed feelings about but I think I should probably withhold Let's see if my light will come on it's a little slow sometimes I guess it doesn't want to but it this case does have some stuff that I'm not extremely thrilled with but it does have some good characteristics too I think the bar was just set a little bit high by the Fantex Enthu Pro, which was really an outstanding value and a great case to build in. But I think on this case, I should withhold final judgment until I've actually installed components. It's really dark, so I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but there are four mechanical drive base slots, two SSD mounts, and three five and a quarter inch bays. And it is a pretty good looking case, I must say. It has no cover for the front ports, which is one less thing to break, but does mean that dust can get into it. So I guess I'll go ahead and start installing components. All right, we're starting to look a little bit like a computer now. I'm definitely not finished putting the system together, but I wanted to go ahead and power it up and make sure everything is gonna work. and. This is pretty encouraging so far. Pretty happy with the current progress. This uh, board does support booting off USB natively, so I'm not gonna have to update the BIOS or do any temporary Windows installs or anything like that. You can see it's booting in a mint right now, which that was just a test to see if it would actually work. And not only that, but I'm currently running a 20% overclock on this system. The frequency is now at 3.61 gigahertz and I don't even have the fan installed on this Hyper 212 and it's still very cool to the touch so I may be able to push it as high as 30 percent on the overclock but I may run into stability issues at that point but anyways here we are in the mint desktop so really I need to just put a pin in it and go ahead and finish assembling the system I don't have any of the drives or anything like that installed but I'm just glad all the hardware checked out considering that most of the stuff is second hand. Alright, I've got this system pretty much put together now. A few things to note. I misspoke earlier when I said it only has two SSD mounts. It has four of those little SSD slots there. That is kind of a nice feature about this case. I was a little skeptical at first. I think I was just spoiled after using that Fantex case. But the 200R ended up being pretty decent to build in. Of course the toolless five and a quarter inch drive bay things don't work all that well I still ended up having to use screws to get a decent fit I will say that uh, getting Linux set up and configured on this older hardware was a slightly more of a headache than it normally is but not too bad I've got pretty much everything working now except um, I haven't hooked up the sound card yet for the overclock I've only tried the automatic overclocking profiles I haven't tried to do any manual overclocking so far but it is not able to boot at 30% overclock so I just have kept it at the 20% overclock now it's not you know a rocket ship by any means it's still probably slower than I think than a G3900 Celeron 
but it's not too bad. We'll go ahead and boot it up and I'll see if I can uh, give you all evidence of the speed it is running at here in a second. There we go, 3.60 gigahertz. Go ahead and exit to the desktop. <clears throat> Linux for some reason has been having this pop up a lot. I'm not sure if it's an issue with the older hardware. I have had some problems with the video drivers on this also. Like I said, setting up the software side of things has been a little more of a headache with this system than it normally is. Here's that kind of strange uh, game. Kind of hard to play one-handed. This is actually the highest resolution settings, but it's one of the free games on Linux that I found called Lugaroo. Just kind of a rabbit running around. I haven't been able to get very far in it so far, but I'm just showing you the thing does work. Although, I may be doing another little upgrade here in the future on this system. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up for today, but thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed the video make sure to like subscribe or leave a comment down below and stay tuned for more computer and audio related stuff